Okay, so today we're going to make this bearing part here. And we're making this one so we can learn how to use the rib tool in Creo. So I'll move that to my other screen. Make sure I don't have anything in session. Create my new part. And according to the sheet that I gave my students, this part should be named 20001-02. So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to load up my part. I'll turn on my datum planes. And first, I need to model the main structure of the part. So I'm going to start with a revolve. Hold right click to find internal sketch. And I'll sketch on this front plane here, use my right plane as my reference. Middle click to go into the sketch. And now, because of the revolve, first thing I should do is create a center line and then create the basic profile minus the ribs. So this way, down, over, down again, make kind of an L shape here. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, I need to be better off leaving that hole in the center too. So I'll just create that there and trim away those pieces. So then I end up with that hole in the middle that I'm going to need. So now I just need to make sure I have all my dimensions. I have this diameter, I have these two diameters. That looks good. I have a height there and I have a height there. Those are definitely the dimensions I want to use. So I will highlight all of them with a big window. Hold right click, put a modify, and lock my scale. And the first number I'm going to change will say this one. This is supposed to be two inches. So I'll hit two and hit enter. Everything shrinks. I hit OK. Now my part's awfully close to what it's supposed to be. So this is supposed to be two. This is supposed to be one. If you need to put a diameter dimension in, if you don't know how to, you're going to select dimension up here. So if I wanted to put this one in, for example, I'd pick this line, then the center line, then that line again, and then middle click to place the dimension. It gives me a diameter dimension. The diameter of this one is 4.25. The height of the piece is three. You can see it doesn't make it a strong dimension because it was already three. So I can just pick my dimension, hold right click, pick strong. Now it's a nice strong dimension. And then down here, it's going to be 0.5. So now I have all the dimensions I need. I can hit my checkbox, end up with my nice little revolve here. So I'll hit OK. Turn on some edges so we can see them. And I'll go back to a standard orientation. Now, I need to put in some ribs. So I'm going to go to the rib tool, and this time I'm going to use the, actually, sorry, jumping ahead of myself. Because this rib actually meets up with a radius around the edge here, I need to put that radius in. And to save a little bit of time, I could also put the radius on the inside as well. We can see both of those are 1 8 Normally I like to save rounds until the end, but in this case it actually does affect my part working. So I put those two rounds in, making sure to hit control when I click both of them, because I want them both under one set. And then I can hit my checkbox. Now I can go to put my rib in. So profile rib. And it says it wants a sketch. I'm going to define my sketch. I'll draw it right on here, my right plane. Top and top works for me. I just want to look at it from the side. And now I just need to add a few references. So I can right click, click references. I'm going to need this line. I'm going to need this line so I can get that intersection there. Probably going to need this curve. Might need that line. Might need that line. 
If I don't use them, they go away anyways. So I'll hit close, grab a line, start from that intersection, right down to this here until I get a nice tangent constraint. That's all I need for my rib right now. I'm going to hit the checkbox. You can see, based on the way this arrow is flipped, it will change. So if it's flipped out, it's going to try and fill in this area. We can see, obviously, there's nothing out here, so it can't make it. If I flip it in, it's going to follow this line and continue to create the rib until it intersects another part. So you can see it doesn't go through the part here, but it fills in this area. Now my ribs are 3 eighths, so 0.375 for the thickness. And that's all I need to do. I hit the checkbox, I have a nice rib now. So a couple other things I need to do to make sure that this rib works properly. First I'm going to save, as I should do always. And then if I look at my part, <clears throat> I can see that I have a few other rounds. I have some rounds on the rib that are 1 16th. I also have some rounds inside here. Those look awfully close to the same size, but I don't see anywhere that jumps out at me that is pointing there. Alright, so what I'll do is I'll probably add this 1 8th to see what it looks like along the inside and if it looks pretty good I'll probably keep that um, but the thing that is interesting is that these radii on the outside look like they're the same size as the inside so let's see what it looks like if I do an eighth we'll kind of play around to figure out the right way to do this so that's one eighth that doesn't really look like what I'm going for but why don't I try putting those 16th rounds in first to see if that maybe gives me a better result. So 0.0625 for these outside ones. I know those are at least that size. Now, the nice thing about putting those in first is it'll create a nice blend down here for me on both sides. And because I have this round in here, it actually continues it all the way up to the top. So that's 0.125. That looks okay. 0.0625. I don't notice a huge difference there. So being that our picture is really not defining this very easily, in the interest of staying consistent to the other ones, we'll go with the 0.125 and see if that works. Looks like it does. So now what I can do, because I've referenced my original rib, is I'll be able to do a couple patterns to make this right. So I have three ribs that are equally spaced, as it says right here. So I'll move those out of the way. So I can pick my rib. I can right-click, Pattern. I want an axis pattern. And then I need to turn on my axes. So because... I created this as a revolve. I have a nice axis in the middle I can use. Like I said, I need three of them. And then I'll just hit this to equally space them around 360. I'll hit my checkbox, and now I have three ribs. Uh, because I referenced those, the original rib on these other rounds, what I can do now is when I right click my first round and hit pattern, it puts a reference pattern in, and you can see it's going to automatically pattern that to the other ribs. So I hit OK. Now it's patterned to the other ribs. Now my other one, I can do the same thing. Reference pattern. Click to pattern it. Look at that. Now I saved the work. Did it all in a couple quick patterns. And the nice thing about this is if, let's say, down the road, I find I need four ribs. Well, now those other patterns are going to update. And now I have four ribs and those reference patterns automatically pattern to an extra rib, which is a big advantage. But the key here um, is that I really want to make sure I get everything right before I start patterning things around. All right, now the other thing that this feature or this model has is there's a hole here <clears throat> that is 
3 8 drill with a 3 quarter inch counter bore with a 5 16 depth to it. And these are centered between each of the ribs, as far as I can see um, on this part. I can also see that they're on a diameter of three and an eighth right there. So I need to create a hole. Always, always, always use the hole command when you're creating a drilled hole. Don't make extrudes. It creates problems down the road. So I put my hole on the surface that it's going to drill through. I'm going to go up here and make it a standard hole, and I'm going to give it a counter bore. Now, right now, I can't see that stuff because I need to give it the other references. That's what these little green antennas are telling me. So if I switch this to diameter, and I click in my offset references, I can add an axis. That'll give me my diameter. And then I can hold control, and I can pick a plane. Now, the original rib I made, if memory serves, is over here. So why don't I just make it opposite and use the same plane? So I'll hold Control and pick this plane. You can see now my hole has appeared there. So I'm going to say my angle is 0. My diameter is 3.125. And we can see it's on the wrong side. So maybe I want to just do a 180, flip it over the other side. So my hole was 0.375, and I could change it up here, or I could change it in my shape. I'll do both. 0.375 goes all the way through. My counter bore, 0.75, depth, 0.313, 5 sixteenths. And we can see now I have that hole in there. Okay. So from here, I can just hit my checkbox. I can right-click while it's still selected, or I could right-click it over here. Pick pattern. Axis pattern. Click that, that axis in the middle. Change to three of them, and equally space them around 360. I'll double-check just to make sure it's previewed on the right location. And now my hole um, has patterned around three times and it's fit in between each of these different sections of the part. And the only thing my part has left is this little hole in the middle of the ribs. And it says it's just a 3 a hole. I don't know, it might be a lubrication hole or something. Uh, 3 a drill. It's one and a quarter from the top, and it looks to me like it's right in line with this hole, because that's what they're showing us in this section. I also don't see them on the other sides. It doesn't say there's three of them, so I'm just going to put one in. So, for the hole, I'm going to click on this tangent surface. I'm going to drag one of my references up to the top, and I'll drag one to this plane. Now I'll undo that just in case you want to do it a different way. I could have, it's a radial hole because it's on a cylinder, but I could have just clicked an offset references, hold, held control, picked the top, and then picked my right plane. That would have done the same thing. So for my angle, zero. For the distance from this surface, as I said earlier, it's going to be 1.25. It's a 3 8 hole, and the only thing I'm going to change, instead of going through all, which is going to drill all the way through my other rib, I'm going to pick this right here, drill up to next surface. What that'll do is it'll drill through until it breaks through, and then stop once it hits another solid surface. So I hit my checkbox. Now I've got that other hole in there, and it would appear that my part is done. So I'm going to save. And we've completed the second part.